Hi, this is Julie with Beetaholic, and today I want to show you how to remove the back shank off of a button. Buttons are great for using in jewelry making. They offer a really unique element and a lot of possibilities. Here I have a couple projects that have been completed with buttons. I have these clip-on earrings, which actually take on a little bit of a retro vintage vibe. Really fun. This was a skull button. I have a steampunk ring. I've taken the shank off of the back side here and just sanded it flat and put a glue-on ring base to it. And that's what I want to do in this project here is I want to take this button, I want to remove that shank and then glue it on to my ring form. So the tools you're going to need, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters. I actually recommend using a pair that's your household utility wire cutters. I don't want anyone using their nice flush cutters. Um, it will destroy them. So be warned of that. So use an inexpensive household pair. I would actually rather not be even using these, but these are what I have on hand. So I'm going to use them for the demonstration. Just remember the older, the cruddier the pair, the better. You're going to need a file. I have my diamond file set right here. So I've taken out a file that I want to use. You're going to need a dust mask. Uh, this I just got it like a painting store, a hardware store. And you're going to want to definitely don that. And you're also going to want some safety goggles because when you're snipping off that backside, it has a tendency to fly. So I'm going to put on my goggles. And in one moment, I'm going to put on my mask. But first, I want to walk you through the different types of buttons. Here I have a beautiful check glass button. Now it also has a glass shank, which unfortunately means you're kind of stuck. You're not going to be able to snip this off and remove it. It's going to cause the glass to shatter. You're going to end up with glass shards. Not a good thing. So you can do wonderful things with this button. You just have to work around the fact that the shank is going to be attached still. So you can do a bead weaving bezel setting. You can do a lot of different things. You can build up the base so that it becomes level with the actual tip of the shank instead of the backside of the button. So on glass ones, you just can't remove them. There are some buttons that look like this in the back. This is a, this here is a vintage button. What you can do with these is you can go ahead and I'm not going to do it to this button, but you could just using some pressure, go ahead and just try to depress that raised area. And oftentimes that's just going to collapse down into the button. And I always like to use a towel and I like to go ahead and cushion my buttons. It makes it a lot easier. It's better on the button too than using it on a hard surface. So another type of button back you're going to run into, especially if you're doing vintage buttons, are these type right here. And what you can do is you can snip them right along the edge and then just pull them out. And finally, you're going to end up with plastic button shanks. And these are actually great. Now I have my safety goggles on so I can feel fine to do this. It looks like metal, but it's plastic. And what you're going to do is just right up at the edge. You can see that my wire cutters are flush against the back side of the button. Snip. And snip. And then I will just file, file that down. And that is basically the same principle I'm going to do with my metal button, but it's going to act a little bit differently because it's a lot harder to snip through metal, obviously, than plastic. So I need to put on my mask. And I'll try to talk through the mask. So what you're going to want to do is right here where you see the area widen. So it's pretty much solid metal right along here. But then as that loop forms right in there is where you want to snip. Then go to the other side. Make sure you have your goggles on. Make sure that your Flat screen TV is not right in front of your workstation because this is going to fly, so you want to position it in direction. It's not going to be a problem if that little piece goes. You can try to also kind of catch the piece if you want. That way it didn't go quite as far, but just be prepared for that. So now I actually have quite a bit of a remnant left of my shank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cushion my button face down in my towel, take my diamond file, and I'm just going to start to sand it. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to work from different directions. Check on the progress of my sanding. You can see it's starting to wear down. And I'm 
being careful not to scratch up the button. So I'm holding it at an angle where my, it's a little hard to see in the towel, but I'm holding it at an angle where it's like this, not like that. So it's at a even plane. And I'm just gonna keep sanding. And you can see I'm getting some of the metal dust and that's why you definitely have to wear your mask. I've sanded for about five minutes and as you can see the shank is completely gone. It's just smooth now. There are some scratches on the back of my button from where I sanded and that's going to be pretty hard to avoid just because you are wanting to sand that down so flush with the back. If you are going to scratch up the back side of the button probably a little bit. To me, it's really no big deal. It's the back side, no one's gonna see it. The important part is getting that completely smooth. So here's my front, and now I'm actually gonna show you really quick just how to put on the ring form. I'm gonna be using E6000, wonderful glue. All I need to do to complete my ring is put a little bit of glue on the tab, center, that glue on tab in the middle of the back side of your button. Press into place and let dry. And then you're gonna have a great ring. I hope this opens up a new world for you of using buttons in jewelry making.